It wouldn't be Halloween without talking to our favorite storyteller, Thea Lewis. Thea, come on in. Oh, hello. It's so good to be here tonight. Oh, it is. It is. All right. Now, you've written some new books since we've last talked. Tell us about that. Yes. As a matter of fact, um, I have a book about Burlington's Lakeview Cemetery that is filled with notables. It's not a haunted book in particular, although people who've been on my tours will realize that some of the characters do figure into my haunted tales. There are people like John J. Flynn, who built the Flynn Theater, and also uh, Brevet Major General William Wells, who has been described by people on my Queen City Ghost Walk Facebook page as a real Civil War hottie. <laughs> oh, I've been, I've been to that cemetery just for to walk around. It's beautiful. It's right there on the shore of Lake Champlain. It's a beautiful cemetery. Uh, tell us about some more books. Well, um, not too long ago, my book um, that is called Wicked Vermont came out, and that was a lot of fun to write. I did a deep dive into the special collections at UVM and into the old Burlington Free Press articles, and even learned through my research that my dear departed grandmother was guilty of breaking the law, breaking the law back in the 1940s, <laughs> selling liquor on Battery Street out her back door until she got busted by some local agents. <laughs> oh, Manny. <laughs> it's in the book. <laughs> all right. And the, what, are, what tours are you doing this time of year? I know you're very busy. Oh, we are all tours all the time. We're doing our Darkness Falls tour. It's our 20th anniversary. Can you even believe it? I think you were on some of our earliest tours. Um, so the Darkness Falls tour, we just finished up our Ghosts and Legends of Lake Champlain tours, which uh, benefited local nonprofits um, with a 50-50 uh, every Wednesday night. We've got tours for kids and their adventurous adults at Lakeview Cemetery called Fright by Flashlight, where they can learn a little bit of a uh, dowsing and uh, some work with compasses to find ghosts in the cemetery. And of course, our new last year, True Crime Walking Tour. We talk about the likes of Ted Bundy and H.H. H. Holmes. Oh, my goodness. And I know you have a special story to tell us uh, from that tour. So scare us. All right. Well, actually, this is a story that crosses over between the True Crime Tours and the Darkness Falls Tours. I've learned through my research and through talking with some folks in town who are in the know that we are seeing ghosts in the downtown area and down on the waterfront that appear to be very high style ladies of the evening from back in the day. And I'm talking the third part of the 1800s and the early 1900s, ladies with great big bell-shaped skirts and fancy hats and parasols. And you know, the lore goes that years ago, back in the early 1900s, there were two fancy hotels people loved to go to on the corner of St. Paul and Main. Now, one of those was of course a building that's still there, the Hotel Vermont, and the other, was a hotel called the Van Ness. Now, these places had beautiful ballrooms and dining rooms, and the Van Ness had a wonderful rooftop garden. Well, um, I was able to talk to a young man many years ago, about halfway through the 20 year duration of our Queen City Ghost Walk tours, who uh, sat down with me at a little local bar and told me his story from the old Hotel Vermont. Now, what you need to know is in the old Hotel Vermont, there is a shared corridor downstairs. This one night, this young man was headed out to move a keg from one place to another. And at the end of the corridor, he saw a young woman standing with a parasol over her shoulder, staring at a picture on the wall. Well, at first, he wondered about her costume. He thought maybe she'd been in a show at the Flynn and had just left that place without changing. But one thing was certain. He was getting off work at the bar in just a little while, and he knew he had to talk to her to invite her out for a beer or a drink because he was free. He said that he crept down the corridor and put his hand out gently. He told me he didn't want to startle her or in his words, um, Mikey, the man was from Boston. He said, I didn't want to look like too much of a stalker. So he went up to her and he put out his hand and he said, excuse me, miss, my name is Mikey. And I was just wondering. And the woman turned to him and gave him the most beautiful smile, he told me. And that's when she began to fade. She was there, and then not so much, and not so much, until she was gone, like a photograph developing in reverse. Well, I could not believe this. I said, Mikey, this is one of the best full body apparition stories I've heard from downtown Burlington. Now, tell me, how did you feel 
were you scared? And he said, nah, wasn't really scared. Just felt a little stupid. <laughs> so all of these uh, ladies of the evening, I suspect um, some of them are connected to this woman who I talk about on my true crime tour named Philomene Lemoyne, who was the premier madam in the city of Burlington for nearly four decades. Uh, she was notorious with the local constabulary. Um, police would cite her into court for, uh, you know, girls or booze. And pretty soon she discovered that it really didn't make much sense for her to show up. They were fining her $200, $300, $400, more than people who were breaking the law by assaulting other people folks. And pretty soon she just didn't go and paid the fines anyway. I find her fascinating. Now, did she have a house? Um... She did. She had a house in what they used to call the French neighborhood on Intervale Avenue in Burlington in the old North End back in the day. And on one of my true crime tours, that was a bus tour before we started doing them as walking tours, um, I was getting off the bus to help my folks down off the steps because people wanted to take photos and get a close look at Philomene Lemoyne's old place. And I had a retired sheriff who stepped down off the bus, put his hands on his hips, and looked at me and said, oh my gosh, Thea, Philomene must have had a woman in every window of this house. And I have to admit, I felt like a complete rube because it was the first time it occurred to me that in the city of Burlington back in the day, a person would build this fine Victorian house and have women for sale in all the windows. <laughs> <laughs> Those were the days. Those were the days, my friend. Do you have any other stories about ladies of the evening? Well, you know, one of the things that I found absolutely fascinating about the ladies of the evening on the corners of St. Paul and Maine were that the the fellows who were managers of the hotels were being browbeaten by local folks who just didn't want this kind of action in and out of the hotels. So apparently they put their heads together and came up with what I think is a very elegant solution. They hired some young men with strong backs to create a tunnel from underneath the Hotel Van Ness to underneath the Hotel Vermont. And that way, when these ladies came, looking absolutely delectable, they could be ushered into a little alcove in either hotel and treated nicely, you know, given lemonade or cucumber water or hot tea, depending on the season. And then if their services were particularly required on either side of the road, a little bell would ring and an angel wouldn't get its wings. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is just great. Well, thank you so much, Thea. I look forward to going on some more of your tours, and I know many of our viewers will be buying your books. Have a happy Halloween and a great rest of the year. And a happy Halloween to you, too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Buy her books.